Kuzangpo, Bhutan e-learning project welcomes children to this lesson. I am Sumitra Subba. This lesson is a science lesson for Key Stage 3, Classes 7 and 8. My dear children, we see beautiful things around us. We also see interesting phenomena going on around us. Do you know the reason behind all this? It is all because of the phenomena undergone by light. Light undergoes several types of phenomena. But today we will be learning reflection of light. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain different types of images, state types of spherical mirrors, construct ray diagrams for spherical mirrors, state the applications of spherical mirrors in our day-to-day -day life. Let's look at the definition of reflection of light. The bouncing back of light into the same medium is called reflection of light. It depends upon the nature of surface. So we have two types of uh, reflection of light. Regular reflection and irregular reflection. As you can see here in the diagram, regular reflection takes place on a smooth surface whereas irregular reflection takes place on a rough surface. It is due to the regular reflection that images are formed. That is when the reflected rays from a smooth surface intersect each other, they form different types of images. And uh, it is due to the irregular reflection that we are able to see the things around us. Next, let's look at the types of images. We have two types of images, real image and virtual image. Now let's look at their differences. Real image is formed by the actual intersection of the reflected rays or we can say it is formed where the rays actually meet whereas virtual image is formed where the reflected rays appear to meet they only appear to meet. Real image is always inverted, whereas virtual image is always upright. And the last one, real image can be obtained on the screen, whereas virtual image cannot be obtained on the screen. Please remember this. I have a question for you. There is a real image and a virtual image. In the photograph here can you identify real image and virtual image here okay now look at the answer is the answer correct yes the one uh, where the image is inverted is the real image and the other one where the image is upright that is in the case of plane mirror is a virtual image now let's look at the construction of spherical mirror Spherical mirrors are actually part of a hollow sphere. Hollow sphere made up of glass. The diameter of this hollow glass sphere is called the principal axis. The center of this sphere is called the center of curvature. The radius of this sphere is called the radius of curvature. And if you silver the outer bulging part of the sphere, Silver means if you paint the outer bulging part of the sphere and if you break this part, then this becomes a concave mirror. You can see here the, the concave side, okay, the, the side which is curved inward is the reflecting surface. In the same manner, now if we silver the inner surface that is the concave side now of the hollow sphere, then we get a convex mirror. In the case of convex mirror, the outer bulging surface is the reflecting surface. Whereas in the case of concave mirror, the inner surface is the concave surface. That is the inner surface is curved inward. The reflecting surface is curved 
inward. In the case of convex mirror, the reflecting surface is curved outward and the point where the principal axis cuts the surface of the mirror is called the pole of the mirror represented by P. So we have two types of mirror, convex mirror and concave mirror. Now let's look at the terms related to these mirrors one by one. I have already shown you during the construction of the mirror also. We have uh, around six terms here. The first one is the principal axis. The second is the pole, principal focus, center of curvature, focal length F, and then the radius of curvature R. Now let's uh, look at these features in a concave mirror. So this is a principal axis in a concave mirror. The point where the principal axis meets the or cuts the mirror is called the pole represented by the letter P and then the point F is called the focus of the mirror. I'll show you what happens uh, at the focus later. The distance uh, between this focus and the pole is called the focal length of the mirror. And then we have the center of curvature denoted by C. The distance between the center of curvature C and the mirror is called the radius of curvature denoted by R. Next, let's uh, look at this uh, features in the convex mirror. Again, this is the convex mirror and then the line cutting this mirror is the principal axis and then the point where the principal axis cuts the mirror is called the pole. Then we have the focus of the convex mirror. Remember in the case of concave mirror, focus was in front of the mirror, that's in front of the reflecting surface and here it is behind the mirror. Then we have the center of curvature of the mirror, then the distance between the focus and the pole is called the focal length denoted by small letter f. The distance between the center of curvature and the pole is called the radius of curvature denoted by r. Now look at this ray diagrams. You can see in the case of concave mirror when a beam of parallel rays are incident on a concave mirror all the rays after reflection they meet at a point. All of them converge at a point after reflection. So the point where this reflected rays meet after reflection is called the principal focus or simply focus denoted by letter F, capital letter F. Similarly, in the case of a convex mirror, when a beam of parallel rays are incident on the surface of a convex mirror, the rays after reflection appear to diverge from a point. They appear to diverge or emerge from a point. And the point from where this reflected rays appear to diverge is called the principal focus or simply the focus of the convex mirror. So since concave mirror converges set of parallel rays after reflection at a point, it is also called converging mirror. Similarly, convex mirror is also called a diverging mirror because it appears to diverge light rays after reflection. That is when the incident rays are parallel to the principal axis. It appears to diverge the rays from a point. So a concave mirror is called a converging mirror and a convex mirror is also called a diverging mirror. Now we are going to learn how to construct ray diagrams in the case of spherical mirrors. But uh, before going for the construction, we need to learn some 
rules for constructing ray diagrams so first we'll go for the concave mirror and then convex mirror okay this is the first rule the first rule for constructing a ray diagram in the case of concave mirror the first rule is ray of light parallel to principal axis passes through the principal focus after reflection from the mirror remember ray of light which is parallel to principal axis always passes through the focus after reflection from the mirror so let's look at the diagram this is a concave mirror then we have the principal axis and this is the focus we have the center of curvature remember the distance between the pole and the focus and then the distance between the focus f and the center of curvature should be always equal when you draw a ray diagram okay here so let's take a ray parallel to the principal axis after reflection from the mirror it always passes through the focus f this is one very important rule we will be using this ray while drawing ray diagrams then let's go for the second rule the second rule is ray of light passing through center of curvature c is reflected back along the same path now let's see in the diagram this is the concave mirror we have the principal axis we have the pole this is the principal focus this is the center of curvature now look at this ray it is passing through the center of curvature c so after reflection it retraces the same path so this is another important ray for the construction of ray diagram now let's go for the third rule the third rule is when a ray of light passes through the principal focus then it becomes parallel to the principal axis after reflection from the mirror this is just opposite to that of the first rule remember the first rule in the first rule when a ray of light is parallel to the principal axis then it passes through the focus after reflection and now in this rule when the ray of light passes through the focus then it becomes parallel to the principal axis after reflection so let's look at the diagram so this is the concave mirror this is the principal axis this is the pole then we have the focus then we have the center of curvature this is the ray passing through the focus the reflected ray now becomes parallel to the principal axis so this is another important rule now let's look at the last rule according to this rule ray of light incident on the pole of the mirror is reflected obeying the laws of reflection i hope you remember the laws of reflection that is a uh, angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection so let's look at the diagram this is the concave mirror this is the principal axis we have the pole we have the focus we have the center of curvature now this is the ray incident at the pole making certain angle theta then the ray is reflected making same angle theta with the principal axis so this is how it obeys the laws of reflection so remember here the angle of incidence that is the angle between the incident ray and then the principal axis and then the angle between the reflected ray and the principal axis should be always equal now we will construct ray diagrams in the case of concave mirror the first case is when the object is at infinity infinity means when the object is very very far away from us like the sun 
the light coming from the sun is considered to be parallel okay because sun is very very far away from us so the light rays coming from the sun are always drawn parallel to each other so now let's construct the ray diagram for this case so let's take a concave mirror and this is the principal axis for the concave mirror this is the pole then we draw a principal focus and then we have the center of curvature remember the center of curvature c is the point where you can keep your compass while drawing this uh, concave mirror and the focus should be in the middle exactly in the middle of the pole and the center of curvature so these are the set of rays coming from the object which is at infinity so one ray is incident at the pole another ray is passing through the center of curvature now you remember the four rules that we just studied or learned so you can uh, remember we have to construct the reflected ray for the first ray by taking the fourth rule that is a ray incident at the pole is reflected obeying laws of reflection so this is the reflected ray for the first incident ray this is according to fourth rule then the second ray that is the second rule a ray passing through center of curvature is reflected back along the same path remember wherever the reflected rays of these two incident rays meet the image is formed there if the reflected rays meet above the principal axis then the image will be upright and if the reflected rays meet below the principal axis remember the image will be inverted that is upside down in this case since the reflected rays are meeting below the principal axis you will get an inverted image like this since the object here is at infinity for example the sun and the sun is so large but here see the image is very small compared to the size of the sun so from here we can uh, have the characteristics of the image we will know or we can uh, state the characteristics of the image you can see clearly from the diagram the image is inverted so it is a real image and it is highly diminished that is it is smaller much much smaller than the object and the image is formed at the principal focus now let's look at the second case the second case is when an object is placed beyond the center of curvature so let's draw the image now here let's draw the ray diagram so let's take the concave mirror and this is the principal axis this is the pole and you can draw the focus center of curvature remember how to draw the mirror okay, and uh, and then how to mark the principal focus and the center of curvature remember the center of curvature is the point where you place your compass while drawing the spherical mirror while drawing the mirror wherever you place your compass that will be the center of curvature and half the distance between the center of curvature and the pole will be your focus f so here we are taking object beyond the center of curvature so you can draw any two set of rays here in the previous one we have taken two parallel rays now here the first ray let's take uh, the first ray parallel to the principal axis and always draw the rays from the tip of the object the ray drawn parallel to the principal axis remember will pass through the focus after reflection so this is one of the rules that we have just studied let's take the next ray passing through the center of curvature c so as you know again from the rule that a ray 
passing through center of curvature is reflected back along the same path. So now see where are the reflected rays meeting? They are again meeting below the principal axis, which means the image will be again inverted image. And again, compare the size of the object and the image. The image is smaller than the object. So it is diminished. And where is the image formed? It is formed between the principal focus and the center of curvature. So when an object is placed beyond the center of curvature, the image formed is real inverted diminished and it is formed between the principal focus and the center of curvature. I hope by now you know how to draw or construct ray diagrams. Remember when you construct ray diagrams you should take two rays depending upon the nature of the object the two rays you have to you can take uh, either parallel to the principal axis or you can take uh, the ray passing to the center of curvature or you can take a ray passing through principal focus or you can take a ray incident at the pole only two of these rays you can draw only two of these rays and then you can draw the reflected ray according to the four rules and wherever the reflected rays meet image is formed there can you complete the following ray diagrams and find the characteristics or the properties of the image formed in each of these cases this is the third case so i have done first and second case for you now this ones you can Try it yourself. This is the third one. That is when an object is placed at center of curvature. So where do you think will the image form? And what type of image do you think will be formed here? Please construct ray diagram and find out. And this is the fourth case for concave mirror. Here the object is between principal focus and the center of curvature. So you can take any two rays and then construct the image here and also find the characteristics of the image formed. Now these are some uses of concave mirror. It is used as dentist's mirror. It is also used as reflector in torch light it is also used as reflector in headlight of cars or vehicles so these are some of the uses you can try to find some more now we are done with the concave mirror now we'll go for convex mirror now before going for the ray diagram of convex mirror again we'll look at the rules for drawing or constructing ray diagram in the case of convex mirror the rules are same but uh, there is a slight difference in the construction the first rule for convex mirror it is similar to that of concave mirror just a slight difference ray of light parallel to principal axis after reflection from the mirror appear to diverge from the principal focus f of the mirror now let's look at the diagram so this is the convex mirror then we have principal axis we have the pole we have a focus we have center of curvature now let's draw a ray parallel to principal axis then see the reflected ray look at the reflected ray the ray appears to come from the focus f okay, it just appears to come only it actually does not come from the focus remember so this is the difference in the case of convex mirror. In the case of a concave mirror, the reflected ray actually passes through the focus. But here in convex mirror, the reflected ray only appears to pass or appears to diverge 
from the focus. So this is the first rule in the case of convex mirror. Now let's look at the second rule. The second rule again it is similar. A ray of light or which appears to pass through the center of curvature C is reflected back along the same path. So look at the diagram. So again we have the convex mirror, principal axis, pole, focus, center of curvature and then uh, let's draw a ray which appear to pass through the center of curvature and see it is reflected back along the same path. Remember in the case of convex mirror we are extending the ray behind the mirror. So we need to draw in uh, we need to draw a dashed light or broken line. Okay, not a bold line. We need to draw a broken line. Now let's look at the third rule. Ray of light which appear to pass through the focus becomes parallel to principal axis after reflection from a convex mirror. Again, here also the difference is the ray now appear to pass through the focus. That means the incident ray which appear to pass through the focus becomes parallel to principal axis after the reflection. This is the third rule. Now let's go for the fourth rule. The fourth rule is same as uh, in the case of a concave mirror. Ray of light incident on the pole of the mirror gets reflected following the laws of reflection. This is the convex mirror. So this is the principal axis. We have the pole. We have a focus, center of curvature. Now see the ray is incident at the pole of the mirror making an angle theta with the principal axis. So this angle theta is the angle of incidence. Now the ray will be reflected making same angle theta with the principal axis thus obeying one of the law of reflection. So these are the four rules for constructing ray diagram in the case of convex mirror. While constructing ray diagram you can take any of these two rays. Now let's look at the ray diagram of convex mirror. In the case of convex mirror since it always forms a virtual image so we have uh, just one case here. Uh, yes, there is a second case but uh, this is the uh, first one. So when object is placed in front of the mirror, as I said, uh, since the image formed is always virtual here, so object can be placed anywhere in front of the mirror. So let's take the mirror, that is the convex mirror, then uh, let's draw the principal axis passing through the center of the mirror, pole denoted by P, then we have the principal focus, and then we have the center of curvature. So this is the object. Now let's draw a ray parallel to the principal axis at the tip of the object. So remember always we need to draw the incident rays from the tip of the arrow. Since the ray is parallel to principal axis, the reflected ray in this case now appear to come from the focus. And let's draw another ray passing through the center of curvature and uh, according to the rule the ray passing through center of curvature is reflected back along the same path. Okay, the reflected rays are here are extended behind the mirror because if we extend the reflected rays in front of the mirror they are never going to meet and remember the image is formed where the reflected rays actually meet or appear to meet. So that's why we have to draw the reflected rays now, extend them backward. So when we extend them backward in broken line, then they meet at a point behind the mirror. And since the rays are meeting above the principal axis, the image will be upright. Now it won't be inverted. It is upright. And since the image is formed 
where the reflected rays appear to meet so the image is a virtual image so if you compare the size of the image and the object the image is smaller compared to the object so the image in this case is virtual upright diminished and it is formed between the pole of the mirror and the principal focus now if you place this object anywhere in front of the mirror at a finite distance then the image formed is always virtual and smaller than the object you can try for other positions so you can construct the image formed by a convex mirror when the object is at infinity so this is actually the second case for convex mirror you can try it yourself you can construct the image and you can compare the characteristics of the image with that of case 1 now let's look at the uses of convex mirror convex mirror is used as a rear view mirror in vehicles it is also used to view the incoming vehicles or the traffic at sharp bends it is also used as reflectors in street lights now we are done with the lesson on uh, different types of images and spherical mirrors now let's recapitulate what we learned today today uh, we have learned about uh, reflection of light different types of reflection of light we have also learned about uh, different types of images different types of mirrors that is spherical mirrors the terms related to mirror the rules for constructing ray diagrams both for convex mirror as well as concave mirror and we also learned how to construct image through ray diagrams in the case of concave mirror a convex mirror and the last one we also learned the various applications of spherical mirrors now let's look at uh, the last question for today you can try this you can explore some more uses of uh, spherical mirrors that is both convex mirror as well as concave mirror in our day-to-day -day life thank you for attending this lesson